Lulu. Thanks for joining my channel today. I have a review for you of the Memory We Are Memory Keepers foil quill. Now when you get this, it comes with adapters for four different machines, the Silhouette Cameo, the Brother, the Cricut, and the Sizzix. It also comes with three different tips. We have the regular tip, which is the blue one. The aqua colored one is the medium tip, and that's the one I'll be using today. And then you have the pink one, which is the fine tip. There are other tips available. These are the only three I have right now. In addition to the four adapters and the three tools, you get a few other things. You're going to get some foil so that you can do your first couple of projects and you get this little metal doohickey. You're going to use this to slide it under your tool once it's in your machine. So make sure you don't throw that away. While my, my tool is heating up, I'm going to use a hobby holster so that it can just not scorch my desk. And to do that, to heat it up, you're going to need some sort of power source. Now the book suggests you need two feet of room between your power source and your machine, no more than that. I'm gonna use a power bank so I can keep it really close. You can plug it into your laptop if your laptop is close to your machine. Uh, you can plug it into the wall if you have that kind of an outlet. Um, once you plug it into your power source, whatever it is, it lights up and that means it's heating up. So be careful that you don't burn your fingers. Now for my project, I'm going to use some black foil that I bought along with some Basil Basics Coconut Swirl cardstock. This is my go-to cardstock. I use it for everything. I love the white background. I love the texture. It's awesome. So to do this project, I'm going to lay out the full sheet, full 12 by 12 piece of this foil, and I'm going to tape it down with some washi tape. Now I'm not going to use the washi tape that they supplied because it's a little too wide. I want it more narrow just so that it'll fit on my map perfectly. Now you want to tape it down as smoothly as you can get it, but to be honest, I had some wrinkles in it and you wouldn't know it in my final project. So if you have a few little wrinkles, don't obsess over it. Don't get all weird about it. Just go ahead and get it down as smooth as you possibly can and go from there. The wrinkles really don't affect it. I have tried this maybe four or five different projects now after this one and I never had any problems with a couple of wrinkles in the foil. Now that I have my mat set up, I'm going to jump on over here to Silhouette Studio, go to the library, and I'm going to get my design laid out. I found that I get really good results with the foil quill when I use one of the Silhouette Studio library images that are specifically made for the sketch pens. So this design came with two borders on it. I only want one, so I'm going to right click and release the compound path, then go in, delete the one I don't want, select the all of the other one, right click it and make it a compound path again. Now that I've chosen my frame for the outside of my layout, I'm going to resize it so it fits perfectly inside my cut lines. And there's a couple of ways you could do that. Here I'm dragging it. You can also select the whole, the entire image, go to the resize function, which is the three little bars, and click on the double ended arrow, which is the second menu item, and then just resize it to the size you want. 11.75 um, I think fits pretty well. If you do it 11.75 by 11.75, then hit apply, and it'll get it to the perfect size. Then you can go into the align function, align it horizontally, align it vertically, and that's exactly the way it's going to appear on your page. Now because I am a what you see is what you get kind of person, I'm going to change my line color to black. That's not a necessity. It doesn't make any difference in the way the machine works, but I like to see what I'm going to get at the end of the project. I'm also going to go in and select another image, which is an owl, and I'll explain more about that here in a minute. But I want to edit this owl just a little bit because it's not exactly what I want. Now to edit this little guy, I'm going to right click and release compound path. Since that didn't work, I'm going to right click again and select ungroup. And then I'm going to get rid of any of the little pieces of this design that I don't want. I don't want him to have a crown and I don't necessarily need him sitting on a branch. So I'm going to remove all of those, get them out of my way 
and then select them all and delete them to get them completely off the page. Once I've removed all the little extra bits that I don't need, I'm going to resize this owl, but first I'm going to select the whole thing, right click, make it a compound path again so it all moves together and it all resizes together. Once again, I'm going to change the line color. Again, that doesn't do anything other than just make me happy. And then I'm going to, to resize him. Now my photo is a four by six, so I want him to have a fair amount of weight on the page, but I don't want it to overshadow the picture because the picture should always be my focal point. And then I'm going to slide him down towards the bottom, uh, slightly larger than, what is he, just right around three inches tall. And that gives me a good balance on the page with the four inch by six inch photo. Now that I have my design set up exactly the way I want it on the page, I'm going to go click on send right up in the upper right hand corner and make sure my paper is set to what I'm using, which is heavy cardstock. And then for action, I will select sketch and that will automatically change the tool to sketch pen and you can leave that exactly as it is and then you're ready to click on send. Now I'm back at my machine here and I'm ready to insert my paper and also insert my tool into the tool holder. I'm going to make sure my machine is set up properly. I'm going to turn it on and then I'm going to make sure my roller bar is in the right position, which it's not because I was using vinyl. So I'm going to slide it all the way to the far right position. Make sure that lock bar is back in place and then we should be ready to put the mat in. Once I get my mat loaded, I'm going to go ahead and remove the auto blade and I'm going to replace it with the adapter with the heat tool installed already. You can see it's lit up there, it's got power, it's ready to go. Make sure you use the little metal piece because if you don't, you could melt some plastic uh, part of your machine underneath there. That tool does get really, really hot. I'm going to speed this next part up just a bit because it did take about 13 minutes from start to finish for the foil quilt to transfer the foil design onto my cardstock. The little owl character, he's pretty detailed. He took a while to get transferred on there, but it was really important to me that I have him on this page. Um, when I was planning my daughter's baby shower, I found this really cute little owl pendant and a little silver one that I wore to the shower. And then when my grandson was in the hospital, we knew he was going to have to be in the NICU for a, a period of time after he was born. He had a condition called gastroschisis and, um, he ended up being in there right about a month, which is really fast for a gastroschisis baby. And during the weekends, I was able to go visit him, but during the week I had to work and we had obligations at home. So we were really lucky because we were able to check in on the little guy through a camera system they have set up that sits over the bassinet or the incubator so that people can log into the system and you get a live view of what he's doing at the time. And his password, which we did not know when I bought the pendant, had owl in it. So he became my little owl baby and it's kind of stuck ever since then. So it was really important to me that I have this guy, um, this little owl character on the layout. Now, once that's finished, took about 13 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and carefully remove that washi tape from the border and then peel back the foil to reveal the cardstock underneath there that is still attached to the mat. So I really like the foil quill. I think it's a great little tool. Um, I, there are other ways to get a foiled look. You could use a mink machine and a laser printer or you could just run this through the Cameo using the sketch function. Those are all great options. I really like the fact that you got some texture and some shine and it just gives a little bit of a different look than you would get with the other two options available for foiling. I really enjoyed using the foil quill. It's definitely a tool I will reach for again. Using this background, I was able to complete a really sweet layout that has the baby picture, it has the owl, and it has the story that I wanted to tell. I was really happy with it. Thank you very much for stopping by my channel today. I really appreciate all of my viewers and my subscribers. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. That really does help YouTube know that you want to see future videos that are similar to mine or mine. And if you do like my videos, consider hitting the subscribe button and the little bell so you'll be notified anytime I upload a new video. Again, thank you very much for stopping by my channel and I look forward to seeing you again next time.